to another episode of the ZX Spectrum Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Godoy, and today this is episode 8. And obviously, for the music you heard there at the beginning, that was taken from the classic ZX Spectrum game, Robocop, which was based on the Paul Verhoeven movie. And it's a hell of a movie, and it's also one hell of a game. Now, before I talk a little bit about Robocop, I want to quickly just tell any of our new listeners that might be listening to this or watching this for the first time what the ZX Spectrum podcast is all about. So basically, the podcast is basically, it's like a little, my sort of passion thing for the ZX Spectrum. The ZX Spectrum is probably my favorite computer ever of all time, and I love it to this day, still play it to this day. And I started thinking, I need to play more ZX Spectrum games. How do I play games without, because at the moment, via emulation, I could so easily just fire through loads of different games, play a game a minute, move on to the next game, without truly playing a game. So I decided to create this podcast as a way of me playing as many ZX Spectrum games as possible throughout the the year, basically. So I'll play games that I used to play, games that I missed out back in the day, and more modern games. Some good games, some bad games. It's all a bit of fun. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of glad that you guys are on the journey with me. So Robocop then, one of my favorite games ever of all time then. Um, I remember actually first watching the movie, believe it or not. Um, I think I must have been at my cousin Alex's house. He was a few years older than me, so he's probably in his late teens. And uh, I went round there and I watched this film. I had no idea what Robocop was about. And uh, I was just far too young to be watching it. Because I think it came out around 87, the film, 88. And um, I remember just watching. I just thought it was over the top, gory. I was shocked by it. But at the same time, fascinated by this police guy. Because on the cover art of the film obviously you've got like this guy is a robot part human part police officer and i was thinking wow this just looks amazing you know it's very gritty and it was like i said it was just phenomenal one of paul verhoeven's greatest movies actually if not his best one and uh yeah i just fell in love with the film and then i remember sort of hearing about a game coming out uh the first time i came across the game a slightly different game was in the arcade and I was just blown away by the music I, I just thought it was phenomenal the music was just outstanding and then obviously the home conversions came out eventually and the version obviously I want to talk about is a Specky now most of the versions play very very different even the arcade game Amstrad and Specky are very very similar the Commodore 64 is a very different game so is the uh, Commodore Amiga don't know about the Atari ST actually but um, I absolutely love this game and it was one of the first big box games I bought then. So it probably cost me like about, what, £8.99, something like that. I had the cassette version and it came in like a little, you know, inside you'd open it up. It you'd came in with a little plastic packet with the cassette inside. And I saved up my pocket money for this game. And whew, I wasn't disappointed at all. So a little bit about the game then. So... The game then, people that worked on it was Mike Lan, Dawn Drake, Jonathan Dunn, and Bill uh, Harperson. And due to podcasting, you know, via, you know, RGDS and Get to the Chopper, you know, I've, luckily enough, I've managed to talk to uh, Bill Harperson. I've had him on a few of the episodes of Get to the Chopper podcast, which I'm so happy about. Uh, you know, it's brilliant. So anyway, really lovely bloke. So let's talk a bit about the game then. So the box art then. So very similar to the box art that you had in the film. Um, it's got Robocop coming out of the car and he's got like he's looking very metallic and it just I love the font as well it says Robocop and I think it complements really well with the ocean sort of logo as well and on the other side of the box art then you had some stills from the uh, film you had sort of like the well one of the villains there with the uh, I forgot his name is now with Ed 209 Clarence Bodiger I think that was the scene at the drug den just great, 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 um, you know, film altogether. And I, I couldn't wait for them to sort of release this. And what we got, and I'll talk more about this uh, during the gameplay, is how amazing the game was and how it took advantage of um, all the scenes of the films because it's many games in one game. It's just, just perfection. All right, so let's uh, move on to the next section here. I'll get rid of the box art there. And let's bring up the loading screen. And so if I get rid of the cover art and bring myself in, there I am. 
let's bring up the cover episode art there we go so here I am hello everyone you can see me here so the loading screen then let's talk about this loading screen the loading screen is absolutely fantastic Bill Harbison works on this and um, he recently worked on like um, a newer version to celebrate the anniversary of Robocop actually I believe it was and it's just it's even more colorful but back in the day loading this up um, I couldn't believe it. it says see the blockbuster movie and video available 11th of November um, again I must have watched the film first and then uh, got the game but again I must have been 10 years old when this came out yeah it is 1987 but beautiful loading screen there right so let's talk about the game itself sorry I'm just trying to find it I'm moving my camera around by mistake so apologies for any of our listeners there so let's get rid of this um, loading screen and bring up the game there and let's press on pause. Beautiful sampled speech, still blows my mind. And that music playing in the background, wow, just wow. It's just amazing. God, it's so iconic, this music. Now, the music, as great as the Specky version is, the music that comes to mind a lot of the time is the Game Boy version. And that was actually in the Ariston advert. But, okay, let's talk about, apart from this amazing intro music, which is so, I find it so haunting, so beautiful. But let's also talk about some of the other bits and bobs. Um, sampled speech, especially in 128K mode. Listen to this, if I don't know if it will come across. Hold the law. Wow, absolutely blown away by that. So let's start the game then. Nice looking game there. Looks very similar to the arcade, but in black and white. So it's basically a scrolling sort of shoot 'em up. But one of the best though, it still amazes me to this day, the um the animation on Robocop. So basically the first level obviously you start off in the streets. But the music is outstanding. So you've got some regular thugs. And you've also got guys with chainsaws. Now the guys with chainsaws, they're really dangerous because they take a lot of your uh, energy. You've also got to be very careful with the bullets that you've got. Because if you run out of your bullets... Oh, now I've got myself the next power-up, which is the single-shot bullets. Which is the really good one, actually. You've also got baby food, just like in Robocop the movie. Baby food is what Robocop ate in the movie, and in this, it gives him energy. The music is outstanding. It, it, honestly, guys, I, I this is definitely in my top... Oh, I'm out of bullets. Right. This is, I love this game. So like I said before, Ocean Struck Gold by just splitting like the best parts of the film into this uh, game. Like, the second level here is the bit where the woman's going to get raped. And what you got to try and do is kill the baddie. In the film, obviously, it's very different because it had the two punk guys. And it's got that scene with that blonde woman. And uh, they're trying to rape her, basically. And then Robocop aims his targets. So 
this next part of the game again once again set in the street loads more sort of street thugs but i think this time you've got guys with motorbikes you've got to duck and punch those guys got cityscape in the background The only problem I find with this game is, though, when you do get shot and you get bombarded with too many bullets, Robocop tends to freeze when you shoot him. And that really does mess you up. I used to be so good at this game. Not so much nowadays. Dead. Green goes the red. I just love this game. It's beautiful. Honestly. Oh, crap. But yeah, I mean, it is kind of hard and talk and play at the same time. So honestly, the best way to get the best experience out of this podcast, I would say, is watch it on YouTube. Outstanding. God, that was done to perfection. I actually prefer this a lot more than the arcade game and the Commodore 64 version, even the Amiga version, which I played recently via emulation. Ooh, lucky there's some baby food there. I've reached the petrol station bit. And in the film, where the guy goes, you know, you think you're smart, you think you can outsmart a bullet. Love it. What I loved about Robocop, the film, was like, all the baddies were just so memorable. Let's talk a bit about the graphics. The graphics, I think, going back to what 1988, I think, was the last time I played this. Phenomenal. I mean, this is one. Let's put it something like Phantom of the Third Part, the film where Robocop uh, thinks he recognizes some of the stuff he felt wrong to do, and there's none of it. So. Try and find his hair. Try and find his skin. Yep. Earrings. That's a nice easy one. Got a weird nose. That's it. Oh. the wrong eyes there. Hey, I'm the face he's not. And that was Camille and Tommy Reed. Best of Brad Bestock and uh, Patrick Salt, Salt Harry Pete. <laughs> I have got that. There he is. Maybe down there. Hang on. Oh. Oh. Still amazing to see. I think that's the bit where I met the drug den. music tends to repeat a little bit I find but hey not a big deal when the music's phenomenal and the game did have some sequels Robocop 2 especially and Robocop 3 sadly I don't think none of them work well as the first game Robocop 2 I thought was just too damn hard I just lacked the charm of the first game and Robocop was one of those games that was just in the on the charts for absolutely ages. On 
think I think it must have been on the Christmas chart for at least like about two years or maybe more. Look at the animation in Gear Chat Gear Bay. This game has just got amazing graphics. Simple backdrops, but I think that, that they have to be. They have to be simple, otherwise they'd get a little bit too complicated. And I think that's what happened. That was the problem with the... Um, with Robocop 2. I think there was too much going on screen. Gotta go up some stairs and try and get some baby food. I've got like um, a sl thingy gun now. Oh no! Oh man, I'm dead, 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 dead. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite ocean games. remember I was so damn good at this I could do the game without dying and so far I've died a couple of times this is possibly my favorite Robocop game out there actually there's lo Robocop sort of like series there's loads of Robocop games you know obviously one of my other favorite ones is Robocop vs Terminator on Sega Mega Drive phenomenal game This is such an accomplishment, what they managed to do on the Specky. You know, shout out to all the people, guys and girls that worked on it. So yeah, let's start um, sort of talking about stuff then. Graphics then. I think they're really, really good. Really, really good. So I'd, you know, I'd give them top sort of like score for that. Music. Music. Outstanding. How that guy managed to get me. Is that scatter bullets again? Yeah, so you've got like uh, the number of bullets you've got left on the bottom of the screen. I've got eight more bullets on this. I need to find more bullets. I need to find more baby food as well. Damn it, the baby food's over here. Damn it, dead again. I think that is me done and dusted. Oh, God, that's me. I think I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me kill myself, and um, we can talk a little bit more about it. <coughs> okay, this is one of my favorite games. I think overall, uh, this game is definitely a five out of five. Back in the day, I could have done this with, I could this. God damn it! Two more levels. This is and um, just a great, great, great game. Major compliment with the soundtrack to beat. I've never heard soundtrack. Still sounds like very very clear compared to a lot of you know, special games. So I'm gonna score this game five out of five. I really hope you've enjoyed sort of listening to my ramblings about this game. This is such a phenomenal game, guys. I've been Andy Godoy, and I'll see you next time. Cheers and thanks for playing.